Hi friends, welcome to Ofa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 41 in Azure Data Factory Real Time Scenarios playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about how we can compare files between source and sync. That means, let's assume you have two folders. One is source folder and another one is sync folder. So, between this is source folder and sync folder, let's assume you want to copy the files. When you are copying the files, let's assume uh, you have like uh, 100 files in the source folder and maybe you have 50 files already in the sync folder. So, I need to make sure which 50 files in the sync is missing so that I can copy only that 50 files. So, it is like a comparison between source and sync and take out the missing files after comparison between source and sync. If this is not making sense at this moment, let me practically show you this with the help of a demo. So, let us go to uh, Chrome browser where I have opened my data factory already. I mean, this is my Azure portal. Now, let me go to ADF Mahir. This is my uh, data factory uh, which I am using inside my subscription and now let me open this data factory here. So, ADF Mahir is my data factory name. So, let us wait for the data factory to load here. Now, let me go back to the previous tab and here let me go back to my maybe ADLS Mahir storage account and let me explain you the requirement. So, here let me navigate to containers. Under containers, I have a container called sample container. If I go inside the sample container, there is a folder called data. So, let us assume this is my source location. So, inside this data folder, I have three files, right? Employees, sales1, sales2. Now, let us think, so imagine like this is my source folder. So, let me come back to sample container and then let us go inside the output folder. Think like this is my destination location. Okay, so in my example, both source and sync are in the same storage. In your examples or in real time scenario, the locations, the storages may be different. But imagine the case like where we have a source folder where some files are there, like this inside the data folder, and also we have a sync folder where we want to load the data, even there, few files are there. Now we have to compare the files between these two, that means file names, and whatever the files are missing inside the sync, only those files has to be processed from the source. So in the source, now I have employee sales1 sales2 but in my sync location which is output folder I have only employees.csv file. So technically I should be copying only sales1 and sales2 files. So how to do that? So how to make sure what are the files are missing? So to do that let me go to my data factory. Let me go to author menu here and let us try to create a new pipeline here. And here inside this new pipeline let me minimize this. Uh, to do that, first what we have to do is we have to make use of get metadata activity on top of both sync and source locations. So, if you don't know what is get metadata activity, please watch my data factory playlist. Inside that, there is one video where I explain about the get metadata also. So, this get metadata activity, maybe I will use it to get the child items, that means the file names from the source folder. So, get metadata are what I will be saying that get file names from source. This is what I will name it. Okay. And then inside this get metadata activity, let me go to settings. And here let us try to create a new data set, which is so my storage is Gen2 type. So I will be selecting that connector. And let us select the binary data set type here. And here let me name it like maybe like source folder data set. That means this is going to point to my source folder. And let us select my data like storage Gen2 here. And let me browse for my storage uh, account and then select the data folder because that is what is going to act as a source folder for us. So, under sample container data folder. So, let me select this and then let me hit OK. See, I am pointing to only data folder. This is my source folder data set. Okay. And if I open the data set, you can clearly see the same thing. See, it is pointing to the data folder only. So, let us go back to our pipeline. And so, we added one, one get metadata activity. So, now let us try to add another get metadata activity. And let's name this get metadata activity as get file names from sync folder. Okay, or sync, whatever you want to name it, you can name it. So let's go to settings here. And here also let's try to create a new data set which is pointing to the sync folder, that is output folder. So let me select the binary format, continue. Let me name it like a sync folder, maybe. And let's select my storage account linker service. Let's click this browse button, sample container inside the sample container output folder right so let's select this output folder let me click ok now this is pointing to the output folder so if i open this data set here you can clearly say it is pointing to the output folder so let's go back to pipeline now once we do that 
वॉट वी हैव टू डू इज वी हैव टू एक्चुअली यूज ए फिल्टर एक्टिविटी टू फिल्टर द आर टू कंपेयर द फाइल नेम्स बिटवीन दीज टू एक्चुअली बट वन थिंग वी मिस डिट इफ आई गो टू गेट मेरा एक्टिविटी हियर वी सेलेक्टेड ए डेटा सेट बट वी हैव मिस डू टू गिव फील्ड लिस्ट सो वॉट वी वॉन्ट फ्रॉम दट डेटा सेट सो दिस डेटा सेट इज पॉइंटिंग टू माई फोल्डर एंड फ्रॉम दट फोल्डर आई वॉन्ट द चाइल्ड आइटम्स सेम वे इवन इन द सेकेंड गेट मेरा डेटा एक्टिविटी हियर i should select a field list which is which will get you child items that means all the files and folders so you basically in my case all are files in the source and sync folders so i will get i will be getting a file names so now let me hit this debug execution button to see so far we are able to fetch the uh, child items properly from my get metadata activity or not from both source and sync so let's wait for the execution to complete here so you can see like you can hit this refresh button to see the execution status actually always so now if you see for the sync if i go to output i can see there is only one child item which is employees file employees dot csv file okay at the same time if i see the output of the source get metadata activity i can see three items see employees file sales file and the sales2 file so all these file names are coming as an array under the child items property so remember this right under the child item property both both the cases in the both the activities there is a property called child items under the child items you are getting this data as a array okay so now what you have to do you have to filter this information right uh, to get only missing files so what you need to do you need to use a filter activity and then let's try to connect this filter activity on success of both these activities and here maybe filter file names that's what the name i will give and under the settings of the filter activity if you see here you need to supply the items array through which the filter activity loop through and here for each item of that array it will evaluate some condition if the condition is true then it will return back that item so here under items activity let's pass all my file names from the source folder so all my source folder file names are coming in this get metadata activity right so let me hit this add dynamic content here and if you see here what is my activity name get file names from source right so if you scroll down there is something called get file names from source child items if you select this this is going to give you all the file names from my source folder under the child items uh, uh, property so you, you remember right the data is coming as a array, array here right under child items property so let me hit okay so that means we passed our child items array of source folder that means employees.csv file sales1.csv file sales2.csv file now here i need to write a condition so inside this condition what will happen from this uh, array from this uh, employee one sales one sales two from that array it will take each file name and try to evaluate the condition whatever i am going to write it here if this condition is going to true then that item will be available in the output output array okay so let me do that so let me add dynamic content here and here what i can do there is something called contains function so this contain function what it will do in a given array it will search for any particular item is there or not so first you need to supply a array so here what i will be doing i will be passing my sync folder child items you can see all the sync folder child items i will be passing it here that means employees.csv file will come uh, in the sync folder there is no other file so only one item will be there with which it will compare you need to use a item here so this item is nothing but like a each item of my source folder so first it will take the employees file and here in this array employees.csv file will be there so both are matching so contains will give you true next it will take the sales1.csv file and in the output array of or in the output json of the sync folder we have the we don't have the sales1.csv file so it will give false so what i said when it gives false it won't output that result so for sales1 and sales2 this expression is going to give false right but i need to make sure ki this this gives true in that cases so that that two items will be available in my output so here use this not x not function on top of this entire code so let me use this not function now what will happen this code it is going to if you see uh, let me break this code so that you will properly make sense if you see contains to the contains i am passing my sync folder file names along with each file name from my source and the comparison will happen and it will return true or false whatever it returns true or false on top of that i am using a not function to convert that back to false to true and true to false so because we want missing files we don't want the matching files so now everything is good let me hit okay now now if i execute this code let's wait for the debug execution to complete i you can clearly see inside this filter we can get sales1 and sales2 files both will be coming here so let's wait for the execution to complete here 
you can see right now the execution is under q so you, from the source folder we got output here if you see from the source folder we got employees file sales one file sales two file three names we got and then if you see the output json of the sync if i go to sync here we are getting only employees.csv file so now if you see the output of the filter activity you can see sales1.csv file and also sales2.csv file so under value property you will get a both the files so that means we are able to filter the file names from my source after comparing it with my sync so once that is done what you can do whatever the output uh, this value property which which holds the file names array you can supply that to for each activity and then maybe you can loop through if you want to perform a copy or something so something like that i am not going to implement detailly but uh, think like that so you will be using a for each activity and then to the for each activity inside the for each activity you will be maybe executing a sequential execution that means take each item for an array and under items you need to supply the array so what i will be doing from my filter activity where is my filter activity filter file names right so let me scroll down here so filter file names from my filter activity output json i will be taking a value array which holds sales1 and sales2 file and then inside this for each activity maybe i will be using a copy activity to copy those files so in the first iteration sales1 should be copied in the second iteration sales2 should be so in that case my source data set is going to be parameterized it won't point to any specific file we will be having a parameter for the file name and everything so please watch my previous uh, data factory real time scenarios videos and also parameterization videos for data sets so that you will make out sense of it so the main idea is to understand how we can apply a filter to filter the arrays after comparing both arrays so that's what i want to explain in this video i hope you guys get a clear idea about it so let me go back to my presentation uh, i think that's it thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you